today our book is The Hunchback of Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. Um, this book was written in the uh, 1800s, um, but it takes place in the 1400s. Um, and I actually uh, looked up why this book was written. And apparently at the time that this book was written, a lot of the Gothic architecture was being uh, devalued and torn down and, you know, getting run down and all this sort of stuff. Um, and Victor really didn't want that. So he wrote this book hoping that it would give people an appreciation of Gothic architecture in France. Um, which is interesting because the, it, when I read this book, I was expecting it to be very descriptive of the architecture, but it wasn't. <laughs> it gave enough. Like, you certainly got the idea of where you were, um, but it wasn't overkill. It wasn't like Charles Dickens where he was, you know, really trying to f get all his words because he was paid by the word, and so he would just, you know, write about a bunch of stuff that didn't make any sense. Um, I really feel like he was very careful in his um, descriptions and he really, the characters are the main point is what I'm trying to say. Um, so basically, history with me on this book before we dive into the review of it, although I've already said that the descriptions are good. Um, I am not sure if this is one of my favorite books. I got it for free. It has somebody's name written all over it and you know it was just sitting outside in a free bin so I got it um, and it's very interesting this book you can definitely see there are a lot of, of themes here and I was looking as I was reading through it um, the, the, especially this morning I was thinking every character in this book has every major character has someone that they are obsessed with. Some have two people that they are obsessed with um, to a unhealthy degree and it really ends up being the death of these characters. Um, and that is extremely interesting to me. I'm not exactly sure what was going on in Victor's mind when he was writing this. But there's these characters. Okay, let me let me back up. The Hunchback of Notre Dame is, Quasimodo, the main character, is not really the main character. <laughs> He's called, the book is called The Hunchback of Notre Dame, but it does not focus on him at all. In fact, I would say out of the main characters, he is the one we know least about. We don't really know um, why he is the way he is. We don't understand um, how his mind works what he cares about. I mean, we do know what he cares about, but we're not exactly sure why. And we spend the least amount of time with him. Um, actually, we spend more time with people like uh, La Esmeralda. Esmeralda is a um, gypsy girl who, she's very young, she's 16, and she is in love with this soldier dude named Phoebus. Phoebus is how you pronounce it. Uh, Phoebus and if you know the Disney movie, I've looked it up, the Disney movie does not follow this at all. Phoebus is actually a royal class jerk. He's a terrible person, and he is a womanizer who just likes to take advantage of people. But she is in love with him and will do what it like. That's the first obsession. She will do whatever he wants. Then you have Claude Frollo, who is a... He's a learned man. He is part of the church, but he really is like an alchemist and a scientist and all these other things. He really doesn't do any churchy stuff. And he is obsessed with Esmeralda um, to a disgusting and terrible extent as well. And that ends up being his demise as well. Um, and then you have uh, other people. You have Claude Frollo's brother. You have um, this guy named Gring Gringor or something who is obsessed with Esmeralda's goat. <laughs> Ooh. And then you have this other lady who's locked in the cell and she, you hear her backstory a little bit and she's obsessed with her daughter who was stolen from her. Um, and so there's a lot of obsession 
in this book that just drives people mad and ends up being their demise. And then Quasimodo the Hunchback is obsessed with both Esmeralda and Claude Frollo, um, and it, that, again, ends up tearing him apart. Um, it's definitely a book that keeps you interested and keeps you going because you are just so fascinated by these characters and the characters themselves uh, I would say they're fairly realistic definitely leaning more towards the gothic passionate over <laughs> side um, I, I liked the book okay it's a pretty it's a pretty good book um, I don't know it's just a very dark one and one that um, is is not in any way uplifting. You're not gonna. I don't didn't hate the characters as much as I probably should have, but at the same time, I don't like the characters, and I I didn't like reading the book. I was interested in it, but I didn't I didn't like it. That's the only way to describe it. So I I put this book. A, a little bit above some of the other books on my favorites list that I absolutely despise. But however, I really don't think if I hadn't got it for free that I would have bought this book at any point. So, yeah. <laughs> That's my review of it. Um, I'd love to hear some other opinions of it if you have read it. Because it, mm, it's just a, a strange one. A very strange one. So, yeah. That is my review of The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The next book that we'll be reading on the favorites list is right here. This is called The Ides of April. It's something that I read way back when I was like 12 or something. And I don't know if I'm going to like it again. But we'll see because I don't remember anything about it. So I'll let you know and I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.